السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ لاسٹ ویک الحمد للہ ثم الحمد للہ وی گا چانس ٹو وزٹ مکہ فار عمرہ آفٹر پرفارمنگ عمرہ آئی مین وی ہیڈ نتھنگ ٹو ڈو سو وی ڈسائڈ ٹو میٹ شیخ ربی بن ہادی المت خلی حف اللہ اینڈ ہی از اے کنٹمپرری اسکالر ہی از امنگ دی کبار اینڈ شیخ بن باز پریزڈ ہیم شیخ البانی پریزڈ ہیم سو وی ڈسائڈ ٹو میٹ ہیم ان مکہ ہی لیوس ان اے پلیس کالز کالز الاولی ان مکہ which is approximately 15 to 20 minutes distance from Haram, but it's in the proximity of Makkah itself. <clears throat> but the biggest challenge or the biggest task for us was to get in touch with someone who could take us to Sheikh Rabi because we didn't know his house, we didn't know the place where he gives daughters, we didn't know the masjid where he comes. So finally we got a friend in Makkah, Brother Nuh, who is studying in Darul Hadith, so he took us to Sheikh Rabi. While going, going to the house of Sheikh Rabi, we saw the house of Sheikh uh, Abdurrahman Sudais, Imam of Kaaba, and Alhamdulillah, we could finally reach the masjid where Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi al-Madkhali gives his durus. Unfortunately, that day, the dars was cancelled because Sheikh Rabi was ill, and subhanallah, he is 80 to 85 years old, he is weak, When he walks, he takes the help of the stick. So we were eagerly waiting for Sheikh Rabi to come for the Maghrib. Though the, the dars was cancelled, but he does his all prayers in the masjid itself. But when we went to the masjid, we were surprised to look at the masjid because masjid was more like, you know, a rectangular box. And I thought that Sheikh Rabi should have a huge masjid given by the Saudi government because Sheikh Rabi is shown as the Saudi puppet and, uh, you know, the CIA agent, the Mossad agent and what, what not. We heard a lot of things about Sheikh Rabi that he gets funds from CIA, he gets funds from, uh, you know, United States, he gets funds from Bush. I mean, we heard a lot of things about Sheikh Rabi. These are all the accusations and slanders and the sm smearing campaign against Sheikh Rabi. However, when we reached to the masjid, we were surprised to look at the masjid where he comes every day for the prayers. A sheikh walked in, about 90 years old, weak, lean, and wearing ordinary and uh, normal clothes with a dusty bag in his hand. And he put his bag at the corner of a masjid and started praying. We thought he, sh he to be Sheikh Rabi. And I asked Brother Nu that, is he Sheikh Rabi? He said, no, 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 he's not Sheikh Rabi, he's Sheikh Saad al Husayn. Subhanallah, when we looked at him, he was Sheikh Saad al Husayn. Sheikh Saad al Husayn is also a contemporary scholar, and he wrote many books. And we were surprised to look at Sheikh Saad al Husayn. He's a Saudi scholar, but he doesn't even look a scholar. He doesn't even look like a scholar. He doesn't have a huge fan base. He doesn't have videos on YouTube. He doesn't have a Facebook page with, with uh, 1 million or 2 million followers liking the page. He doesn't have all the stuff. But still, he's an alim, alhamdulillah. And when we looked at him, we were surprised to look at his simplicity. The way he came in, the way he's wearing the clothes. I mean, that was simply amazing. But subhanallah, when Sheikh Rabi walked in, He was a simple man. And subhanallah, you could see the glow on his face, the nur on his face, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put on his face. Subhanallah. He looks more like Sheikh Albani. In, I mean, his appearance is more like the Sheikh Albani. And uh, he was wearing normal, ordinary clothes and walking with the help of the stick. He's so, he's so weak and, uh, you know, he's about 85 or 90 years old. And when he walked into the masjid, he was struggling to stand up. And his students kept a chair for him to sit. But still he was struggling to stand in the prayers and then go in the sajda, in, in the prostration. And then he stood up again, struggling against himself to stand up. And subhanAllah, when we looked at him, I mean... All those accusations and the slanders and what not we heard about Sheikh Rabi that he gets funds from USA, from CIA, from Mossad, all these accusations vanished. He's just a simple man. All his mistake is that he exposed he exposed the Shia elements existing in the Ummah. Especially those people who call themselves as Ahlu Sunnah, but still they inherit 
the ideas or the methodology of the Rawafid or the Khawarij. So those people were exposed by Sheikh Rabbi bin Hadi al Madkhali. And when he exposed these elements existing in Ahlul Sunnah, the Khawariji and the Rawafidah elements, Sheikh Albani praised him and Sheikh bin Baz praised him. Since that day, a smearing campaign has been started against Sheikh Rabi. And whoever endorses his views and whoever follows his views, he is called as Al Madkhali. But we know that Sheikh Rabi doesn't speak anything on his own, but Alhamdulillah, he speaks on, uh, on, 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 on Dalail, on the proofs, on the evidences. So the whole smearing campaign has been started against him by those people who were exposed by Sheikh Rabi. And I was among that gang who would always mention the name Madkhali to anyone who, was, who would oppose me or who would oppose my deviant ideas. And I would call them Madkhali or I would call them Madkhalis, his falling Madkhalism. But anyway, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened ways for me and opened my eyes. So I tell everyone that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء Verily, the most fearful of Allah among the slaves are the ulama, are the scholars. And we need to know this, that ulama fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most. You can see at them, you can see them, you can witness them. I mean, they are not the people... Uh, what the enemies of Islam have shown us. It's not what they have shown us. Ulama are the most fearful people among the Ummah. So the next time when we open our mouth against Ulama, we need to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we call any alim as the paid puppet or the paid agent, remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us on the day of judgment that where did you get your proof from? Obviously, we cannot prove and obviously we cannot present the evidences. Then remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will catch us on the day of judgment for defaming and demeaning the scholars and the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah. With this, I give a message to all my friends and brothers out there on the social media, on my Facebook page, that do follow the ulama, follow them and respect them. Take ilm and knowledge from them. Knowledge should be taken from ulama. That's why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Before the end of times, the ilm or the knowledge will be taken away." And he said, "The taking away of the knowledge means the scholars will die." So the knowledge comes through the scholars. So a defaming and the demeaning campaign and the smearing campaign against the scholars is going on. And we need to be aware of that, and we should not be part of these filthy and deviant campaigns. With this, I end this discussion. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.